up on Current OC. Today, we celebrate Black History Month by learning about the Harlem Hellfighters. Plus, we'll show you some highlights from our boys basketball team in action. These stories and more, it all starts now on The Current OC. From the OC TV studios along 6th and Atlantic, Raider Nation's leading news magazine starts now. This is Current OC. Hi, and welcome to The Current OC. I'm Sophia Wagner. And I'm Charlie Costell. Hope you missed us last month as we ironed out some technical issues with our brand new editing suite, and boy was it worth it. Now that we've been trained to operate the new hardware, we are now able to resume our normally scheduled broadcasts. Yes, it is sure good to be back, and I can assure you more frequent episodes are yet to come. February is Black History Month, and the current OC celebrates with a story from our past. Matt Grimley tells us the tale of the African American Regiment of World War I that made U.S. history by being one of the most decorated group of soldiers in modern times. Black History Month is a time where we celebrate some of our most valiant figures in our history. Yet this is not a group of one individual, but rather a group of lion-hearted men that helped us win the fight in World War I. Here's the story of the 369th Infantry Regiment, or as they're most commonly known as, the Harlem Hellfighters. One night, William Henry Johnson was in a trench during the Argonne Offensive when all of a sudden he began to hear clicking noises. He found out that the Germans were cutting the trenches barbed wire. It was a nighttime raid. Johnson grabbed his shovel and prayed. Single-handedly, he managed to fight off an entire German platoon using only his shovel. This impressive feat of bravery was recognized by the French military, who would make him the first American to receive the award, the Croix de Gloire. Sadly, being an African American, his feat of bravery would not be recognized by the U.S. government until 1996, and he would die poor on the streets just a couple years later. At the beginning of the United States' involvement in World War I, African American troops were forbidden from serving in the military. However, they would plead with their congressmen, and finally, the governor of New York would approve the idea. He ordered white veteran Colonel William Hayward to organize a recruitment. The 369th Army Infantry Regiment, or at that time, the 15th New York National Guard Regiment, showed up to serve their country on July 25, 1917. However, there was not enough room at New York's Camp Whitman, so many of the men were sent to train down south at Camp Wadsworth in Spartanburg, South Carolina. There, they faced constant discrimination, banning from local businesses and harassment from the locals. Even when they were sent to France, the harassment would not stop. Instead of being sent to fight alongside their fellow Americans, they were sent to dig ditches and latrines for others. It wasn't until they were integrated in the French army that they would be treated with respect. However, in a disturbing act of racism, the American Expeditionary Forces wrote the secret information concerning black American troops, which had asked the French not to treat the Hellfighters as equals. Thankfully, the French wouldn't listen and saw the Hellfighters as their brothers in arms. When the war ended, the Hellfighters spent 191 days in combat, more than any other U.S. regiment. The French awarded 171 Hellfighters the Croix de Gloire, including Johnson. Johnson would become the first American to ever receive that award. When the Harlem Hellfighters came back to the U.S., they even had to organize their own separate victory parade, as they weren't allowed to march alongside their fellow troops. As a part of Black History Month, we remember the black men and women who helped shape our country into what it is today by standing strong and firm in their beliefs. This has been Matthew Grimley reporting for The Current OC. Thank you, Matthew, for a truly informative black history story. Recently, people across the United States celebrated Groundhog's Day. You know, the day where a bunch of grown men and women turned to a small, dumb mammal to determine if their winter would be shortened or extended. Using cutting-edge technology, the groundhog emerges from his home to, and checks to see if he can see a shadow or not. Makes total scientific sense to me. Yep, meteorology based upon gophers and shadows. Two words, Groundhog Day. If you're anything like me, you've probably thought to yourself for hours about what's so special about groundhogs and why do they have a whole day dedicated to them? During Groundhog Day, people gather around the hog and watch as he predicts the future. 
If Phil, the most well-known groundhog, emerges from his home and sees his shadow, he will get scared and go back inside, which means six more weeks of winter. If Phil does not see his shadow, then that means an early spring. However, Groundhog Day wasn't always celebrated the way we celebrate it today. The first official Groundhog Day dates back to February 2nd, 1887, but it was celebrated long before that. It originated as the ancient Christian tradition of Candlemas, when the Christians would bless and distribute candles needed for winter. The candles represented how long and cold the winter would be. Later, the Germans decided to attribute an animal to this tradition, and the most commonly known one at the time was the badger. When the Dutch immigrated to America, they kept this tradition, but changed the animal to the groundhog, which we now know and love. Over the years, we have continued this tradition and turned it into something fun for everyone. How do you celebrate Groundhog's Day? Uh, I love Groundhog's Day. I just can't get enough of those little hogs. I mean, we, me and my family go to the park and play groundhog tag, and then we go home and watch the groundhog predict the future on TV, and we, after that, we have a feast, and everybody comes over, and uh, my mom makes a mean groundhog stew, so it's pretty fun. Usually on Groundhog's Day, my dad dresses up as a big groundhog and lets all of the little cousins sit on his lap and ask what they want for Groundhog's Day. On Groundhog's Eve, me and my family like to paint uh, groundhog's eggs and hide around the house for the kids to find. Uh, while they're searching, we like to cook the groundhog for dinner. And once they're all tuckered out, that's when we feast. I remember my days looking for eggs. If you're interested in trying any of these traditions, we here at the Kern OC advise you to go for it. This has been Wesley Dice reporting for the Kern OC. Get the gopher thing. It's crazy. Anyway, let's take a short break and when we return, we'll have your local forecast. One of the reasons you should take French is because it is spoken over 29 different countries and regions throughout the world. You might already know some French artists such as Degas, Matisse, Monet, Cecily, Cezanne. Bonnet, Matisse, Renoir. Now you may know some of these French athletes, like we have the god legend of soccer, Zidane, and we also have some new prospects like Kylian Mbappe. You also might know Tony Parker, the basketball player, is taking French and slam dunk. You guys might know these historical French figures, but do you know who else speaks French? Emma Watson, Will Smith, Ben Affleck, Tom Hiddleston, Sean Mendes. Serena Williams, Bradley Cooper, Gwyneth Paltrow, Timothy Chalamet, and Johnny Depp. And don't forget about these French foods and desserts. Hi there, this is my uh, first time doing weather, so bear with me, I'm a little bit nervous. Now over in uh, New Jersey, we really don't see anything coming towards us, a few drizzles here or there, but nothing to really look forward to. Let's look at our local conditions. 
Over here we see a uh, 99 uh, temperature weather. That's really pretty chilly. I would weather up, uh, you know, bundle up if I were you. 85% uh, humidity and uh, four mile wind speeds. That's really nothing at all. Let's move on to our regional temperatures. You see, whoop. Over uh, down here, we see high to low 40s and high 30s. Really kind of chilly still. Up end, we see low 40s again here. Really overall chilly in Jersey, so bundle up if you would. Let's move on to the forecast. Uh, I would, if you are making plans for your Valentine's Day, I'd bundle up because it seems to be a pretty semi cloudy and semi sunny Valentine's Day. So, what do you think, Eli? Is the gerbil right about six more weeks of winter? Honestly, I don't know. It seems pretty springy and pretty sunny to me. Well, that will do it for us on this edition of The Current OC. Look for us next week for our romantic Valentine's Day special. Remember to log on and catch all of our shows and additional content by visiting oc-tv.org. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at OCNJTV, so be sure to like our page and follow us there too. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>